Hello, everybody, and welcome to our monthly membership workshop. I'm Cindy DeFilippo, Daniel Webster Council's Family Engagement Coordinator, and welcome to the fall membership kickoff. This is what we all live for after we come off summer vacation is the fall and welcoming new families as they start the school year. So tonight we're going to go over some of the incentives and the key important steps to take right now as we launch into the school year. And then we are going to talk about the adopt a school program. So um, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here. We're going to dive right in to the membership and marketing hub. This is your one stop spot for all things membership and marketing for your unit. You can scan this QR code. It will bring you right to the web page. And please bookmark it, star it, you know, screenshot it, whatever you'd like to do um, to keep this uh, handy at all times. That has every resource. And if you see a resource that, if you don't see a resource that you feel you could use or that you would need, definitely let us know. You can always email the team at membership at nhscouting.org. And we'd love to hear feedback. So um, on the membership and marketing hub is where you can submit your joint scouting dates, flyer requests, yard signs, and application requests as well. So that way we can make sure that the porch at Nettle Lodge, which is on, the, on your way into Camp Carpenter on the left, is fully stocked for units to pick up at their convenience. There's tons of templates that they offer, that we offer on the membership and marketing hub as well like press release and media alert templates to help you write those and send those out to your local media channels. Um, a welcome back to scouting or welcome to scouting email, um, full emails that are actually written out that you can just personalize. We have family onboarding letters and uh, much more. We also have unit specific downloads as well. So when you scroll down on that homepage, you'll actually see peer-to-peer -peer cards for each program, scout talk videos for each program, um, we have social media calendars that help you plan out your social media and um, a sign up night playbook, which is key because that really gives you a step by step instruction handbook uh, to plan your join scouting night. And then we also have links to um, all the applications and forms that you would need as well. So speaking of requesting flyers. This is a sample of what the back of the flyers look like. We're now utilizing the backs of the flyers. So the whole front is the image of um, boys and girl cubs or boy cubs or girl cubs, depending on what your unit um, serves. Um, and then we also have flyers for troops as well. And because troops are remaining single gender, there's girl troop flyers and there's boy troop flyers. Um, and this is a Cub Scouting template, obviously, but we do have a template for uh, Scouts BSA as well. So as you can see, there's a lot more space to add lots of information about your unit, which is great because that gets families, um, you know, interested and ready to visit and ready to sign up. So we just have a brief explanation of the program. And then here, if you're obviously an all boy pack or all girl pack, this would change. But this would be your joint scouting night information here under that first heading. So that's the date that you set aside to um, have a sign up night or a joint scouting night where the plan is to introduce new families into scouting and into your program. And then um, once you join the unit, you're telling them, hey, once you join, we meet on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. at Pilgrim Church or wherever the location is, and that would be down here, because the biggest question that we get from new families or prospective families is, well, I want to join this unit, but I don't know where they meet or when they meet, what time, what is the commitment like? Families are looking for, what is my commitment? What am I going to commit to here? And how much is this going to cost, right? Those are the two big questions. So, um, the cost I know gets a little tricky because each unit has their own membership fees and things like that that they might incorporate, but definitely start off with putting your meeting day and time. And then your contact information. So you want your main contact that might be your scout master, your cub master, maybe it's your committee chairperson, maybe it's your membership um, coordinator um, or a specific volunteer that you'd like to put folks in touch with. 
that goes here, obviously. And then you can put three upcoming events. We might even be able to fit four, depending on the information that you have. But we do have a slot for three when you request your flyers. And those three upcoming events, it could be just a PAC meeting that you have coming up. Um, you could include um, the Spooktacular event um, that's happening um, at the Granite Base Camp Spooktacular at Camp Carpenter. You could put that in there. Um, and or you could put what you're doing for Halloween or even for the upcoming holiday season. And um, or if it's it's a hike or something, an activity that you guys already have planned, those events would go down here to give folks an idea of what they can look forward to. And then we always have at the bottom that this is not a school sponsored event. We heard from a lot of schools that they really want to have that on the flyers, it's not a school sponsored event, and the registration fee is charged when signing up for Cub Scouts or Scouts BSI. So that's just important information that the schools also prefer as well. Hannah, are captions available? Does anyone here know how to add captions to this meeting? I haven't, um, you can just um, interrupt if you guys know how. If someone wants to write keynotes, maybe Josh, if you don't mind me voluntolding you, <laughs> that's a word, to write maybe keynotes in the chat for Hannah, um, that might be helpful. And Hannah, this presentation will be available on the Membership and Marketing Hub. Um, so you'll be able to have these notes and I can certainly contact you later on as well. So the incentives coming up, the President's Challenge has returned or is continuing, I guess we can say. This has been really popular with a lot of our units. If you sign up five or more new scouts in your unit, they have to be new to scouting. Um, you can earn up to $200 for your unit. So you can really turn this into um, a incentive that benefits your scouts and encourages your scouts to also invite their friends. So for example, maybe you announce at your meeting, hey, we have an opportunity to earn some money for our unit. If each scout brings three friends each to our sign-up night for five friends or whatever number you'd like. And if we sign on five new kids, we get to have a pizza party or a movie night with popcorn or whatever you think that incentive you know, would be that would encourage them. And you could use what you earn, the $200 or the 150 or $100 once the incentive, incentive um, gets filled up. You can use that money towards, towards that fun night celebrating the teamwork it took to um, sign, it, sign on those new scouts and those new families. So you can really use that as an incentive um, with your unit. Beascout.org, um, the $25 joining fee savings has returned. So when you submit your joint scouting date before September 15th, you will receive a promo code that will allow your families to save the $25 when they register via Beascout.org and the online registration only. And that is effective September 1st through the 30th. Also, we have another fun one. We have a fall recruiting checklist and it's all the steps that successful units need to take in order to um, have a great fall recruiting season. This is available on the Membership and Marketing Hub and I can show you um, where the stuff is as well. If you submit the completed list, you will have a chance to win a Scout Shop gift card, a family adventure pass for Granite Base Camp or a free adult camper registration for next summer. Um, I'm looking at the chat here. Oh, um, thank you. Thank you guys for writing notes in the chat. Thank you. All right. Um, so we're going to jump in to BSA's Adopt a, Adopt -a School program. Um, before I get to the Adopt a School, 
Does anyone have any questions so far or comments that I go too quickly? No one, don't be a quiet crowd. <laughs> All right, so um, the Adopt-A-School, this is a great program and it's been around for a while. And, and, I, and I think a lot of our units are probably already doing similar things, but don't realize the resources that are out there. So the Adopt-A-School program, what's great about it is that it creates a partnership between scouts and their local schools. And it's a great opportunity for scouts to serve the children and the schools in their community and really be visible in their community as well. We hear a lot about units that really have trouble connecting with their local schools or being able to even send out flyers in their local schools. And this really is an initiative that strengthens that relationship and really develops that relationship into a partnership, which is so important in general because who goes to school that also may go to scouts, pretty much everybody, right? <laughs> and our schools are really the foundations of our communities as well. And it's so important for scouts to have a strong presence showing that we're there to help improve the school in any way. And I'm going to show you um, the page um, that they've dedicated to adopt a school. And it's also gonna give us some ideas um, about um, what we can do with that program. Um, I'm going to go back in and share that screen. So before I get into adopt a school, I will show you where this page is on the Membership and Marketing Hub. Here's our Membership and Marketing Hub. It has lots of new resources on it. If you scroll down on the home page, you'll see to the left is the Family Den Pilot Program. This has the webinar that, um, that aired on August 11th. It explains all about the program, why they decided to do the pilot, um, all the you know, um, information that you need to know in order to take part in that pilot. If you are taking part in that pilot and you haven't watched it yet, please watch it before the end of this month. And then on the right, we have right there, submit your join scouting night info. Um, I just say join scouting event because it can be a day event if that's what you guys do on the weekends. But um, this is right up top because this is, if you haven't done so already, this is really the next big step or the first big step that units need to take right now in order to make sure that they are set up for success for the fall. So you'll see some quick links here and to the left is resources and downloads. And I wanna show you this because we did an update to this page. And I think it's really helpful because it's much more organized. And as you can see, it's divided into steps. So there's step one and the steps refer to planning a recruiting event or join scouting event. So step one is you have to plan. And so the great thing is it tells you step one, okay, we want to plan. A great plan leads to great results. But underneath, there are all these links, which are all resources you can use to plan. So everything is in that spot, easily accessible for you. So we do have um, the district activities calendar that you can download or print. Planning your scouting year is a, um, a one sheet that you can print as well and has QR codes to our council calendar. Which, is, which has events listed on there uh, for the next 18 months. And then also has um, a QR code for the mobile base camp and that schedule. So you can see what's coming up at the mobile base camp and you can also volunteer at the mobile base camp, which also helps promote your unit, um, as well as um, a few other tools on that one sheet for you. Uh, below that is our unit recruiting checklist. And that was a checklist I was referring to that you can earn some in incentives for completing that. And I'll actually click on that to show you that as well. Oh, it's a download, I forgot. Oh, here it goes. Okay, sometimes they download separately. Um, so this is the unit recruiting checklist. And as you can see, it has August, September. That's about the time frame that you wanna start thinking about those items. And then it has October, November for the items to, to think ahead. 
And then it has the handy QR codes here for the membership and marketing hub. So you can grab your resources and the bscout.org invitation manager in case you need a QR code um, to get um, into the uh, bscout.org. And so this can be printed or downloaded to your device. And then when we go into step two, it's for promoting the event. A lot of us plan the event and then maybe, um, you know, maybe one of the reasons why it isn't as well attended is maybe we didn't promote it long enough or, or promote it in multiple places. So here we have um, all the resources you need to promote the event. So you have the link to re request the flyers right here. Uh, flyers can go out to schools, your chartered organization, your libraries, local businesses that are you know friendly with leaving some flyers or hanging up flyers in the windows, things like that. Your PTOs or PTAs in your schools as well. Maybe they'll put something in a, in a newsletter for you. So there's lots of options. It doesn't always all have to go directly into the schools. Um, it gives you tip. Uh, we have a download here that uh, gives you some tips of how to boost your unit online. Um, there's the press release and media advisory templates as well. And then how to search the BSA Brand Center. The BSA Brand Center, um, hi, Chris, I see it. your hand was raised. Go ahead. Hi, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, it's um, fine. <laughs> <laughs> the first item once the first uh, step was meet with the, the school principal or superintendent. Do you have any guidance to help that meeting to help have a successful meeting? Thank you for that question. Um, I know it's so intimidating to walk into schools, especially if the relationship hasn't always been um, open to, to scouts. And I know we have, there are some schools where it's been a challenge to connect with um, you know, their administration. Um, I don't have a download for that. Um, if, if you could put that in the chat, because that will remind me and I'll copy and paste it in, into my to-do list because that is a good, a great idea to have some simple tips. But um, as for right now, off the top of my head, um, definitely get in, um, you know, a good relationship with the, um, the school, you know, admin, the, the secretary, so to speak, that sits out in front. They're kind of the gatekeepers and you definitely want to have a good relationship with those gatekeepers. So maybe you call the school, you know, hey, welcome back to the new school year. I'm Cindy and I am the troop committee chair um, in the local troop. And we're looking for ways to connect with the school and see how we can partner up to make the school year the best year for you guys and to also, you know, um, alert families that we have this great enrichment opportunity, which is scouting. And really making it more about a partnership and not calling and asking, hey, can we just put flyers in the school? Hey, can we hang up some signs? Really go about it thinking and knowing that this is gonna be a partnership and a relationship that is gonna be important to both parties and it's, and it's reciprocal. I always say it's kind of a tongue, tongue twister, but we want reciprocal relationships. And that's key for the success in scouting because we rely on our communities a lot but our communities also rely on us. So that would be a quick little tip that I would give. Does that help? Yeah, thanks. No problem. Um, and so, yeah, continuing here with, the, with promoting your unit, um, the BSA Brand Center, as I was saying, is a great resource as well. Um, if you just type in BSA Brand Center, it will bring you to the link. Um, it has images, downloads, um, scout talk videos. It has everything you could imagine as peer to peer recruiting cards that you can download. Um, it has um, Spanish and English versions of a lot of um, the visuals as well. And it's a great resource if you don't want to, or if you don't have a lot of good photos like of your own unit. Um, and then we do have a brand identity guide as well and social media guidelines and a social media guidebook. And social media really is key because again, we rely on our communities and a lot of parents around our ages, we're the ones that are on, on Facebook, as you probably noticed, right? All your friends out there 
um, you know, posting about their daily lives. It's really folks our ages. It's not really the, the young whippersnappers anymore. So our target audience is out there and Facebook is free advertising. So make sure you take advantage of that for sure. And I can certainly help you with that as well. Um, so executing the join scouting event. Um, now it's time for the event and these are the tools you need for to, to execute it and make it happen. So we actually have the 2022-2023 BSA membership fee chart. And this chart is, is really helpful, I feel like, for folks like me who I don't really like to sit and add up things in front of other people. It makes me anxious. So this actually has totals across the board of, um, of youth and adults who join on a month-to-month -month basis because we do have prorated fees as well as the insurance costs. And if they um, are going to take advantage of Scout Life magazine or not, and there's all totals across the board. So that's something really great to print and have on hand. Um, the new member coordinator, I strongly suggest that every unit at least attempts to have a new member coordinator volunteer in your unit. This is key for your unit success when you're welcoming new families. This is a person that focuses purely on new members, welcoming families, giving them all the information they need to join, you know, the follow-up, the invite, all of that. Um, and then the sign-up night playbook that I talked about earlier is that step-by-step -step playbook. And that is definitely, um, that could be probably in the planning section as well as this execute section, but really important to look over before having your, before plan, starting to plan your event. Um, and then we have this new tool, which is our join scouting night sign-in sheet. And if will have me open it. Um, oh, sorry, I stopped sharing, didn't I? Um, it probably won't let me open it at this moment, but it is um, a little sign-in sheet that we created for you guys to download. And it has content information, but in addition to that, it has the children's age. And I just want to explain the reason why we added the children's age is because you're gonna want, and Jillian does this, I know she mentioned it and, and I, I agree, it's a great idea. Jillian's on here tonight. Um, the children's age is there. So that way you can connect that family with the appropriate den leader. Um, if you are a troop, obviously you wanna, you wanna connect them with, um, you know, um, a, a patrol leader, but also, you know, obviously make sure you have the two deep leader rule and all, and all of that with those communications. But especially with cubs, you wanna connect that child, if they're gonna be a tiger, with the tiger den leader, with the lion den leader, so on. So that way you have that personal connection with the den leader right off the bat. Hey, welcome, we're excited. Why don't you join us for the next den meeting, which is on this date. Can't wait to see Charlie or Susie there. Um, and you know, please contact me with any questions. And that den leader is that personal contact, which is nice. And then follow-up, like we just said, follow-up is key. So you're gonna use that joint scouting night list or if you decide to use your bscout.org pin, you're gonna follow up with those prospective families right away. Um, there's a welcome to scouting email template link right here. Everything is written out for you and you would just put in your own um, unit's information. You can send them a link to the mini magazine and um, there's a bscout.org pin tutorial. So that way you can learn all about how to navigate your pin before, um, before it really gets busy with a lot of folks waiting in there to connect with you. And then you wanna welcome everybody. So you wanna welcome, um, welcome them by a new family onboarding letter. Um, there's an informational packet here. There is a Scouts BSA um, PowerPoint presentation, which you could definitely print out as a packet as well. And um, if you're welcoming folks back, if they maybe left over COVID but decided to come back, there are welcome to back um, resources as well. And then of course, there are applications and national forms that you can download and print right here. And as you scroll down, there is unit specific um downloadables and print you know things you can print out and utilize for each uh program and as you can see there is a lot so there's a lot of resources available there
Um, just looking at the questions. Um, I, um, Hannah, I know a lot of us, um, I say us because I'm also um, a volunteer as well, um, hold multiple roles. So um, I think an assistant scoutmaster is a great person to also be a new member coordinator if they can take on that role because they obviously know a lot about the program. So, um, so I think that would be great if you have an assistant scoutmaster who's also able to take that on. Um, and then um, let's see, Chris asked, is there a critical mass of scouts that is recommended to start a scout pack for a smaller unit? Does it sometimes make sense to combine bobcats and wolves into the same den? So I know there are smaller um, packs out there and they do uh, combine dens sometimes. And there is there are ways to do that. Um, I'll definitely, I can send you some resources, Chris, as well. If you want to send me an email at membership at NH scouting.org and just kind of put that comment in there. Um, I'll be sure to send you back some resources for that um, and, and we'll get that together for you. But um, to, to start a scout pack in general, um, the registration guidebook states that you need five scouts minimum. Um, if you have a recruiting plan um, and you're, and you know, you feel like you just want to get started and you know, those scouts will come, but you don't quite have five. We can get special permission to, to start a scout pack with two registered youth. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, uh, my, my son is coming from a school in Cincinnati to a small school here in Dover, and they don't have uh, a huge pool of kids to pull from. So I'm approaching the school to see if I can get their pack up and running again. I just wanted to know how much interest we really need to generate mm -hmm. to make that happen. So is five is a minimum for say a, uh, for a den or for. The five would be a minimum for the whole pack. So if you had five oh, kids, okay. regardless of age, yeah, just to get started. One of the things that we're able to do as well, which will help get the word out is if you already have a chartered organization ready to go, and then let's say you're the contact we can do a coming soon pin. And that coming soon pin will pop up when people search your particular zip code. So they'll see that that pack is, is building and coming soon and they can request more information um, through that coming soon pin on BS Scout. Great. Yeah, so it's a great tool. I'm so happy they added that, National added that recently. Um, I think it was last year. Um, so definitely, um, let me know, you know, um, in that reminder email, if you don't mind sending that to me, that always helps because I have to have it in front of me <laughs> to make sure I, sure. I get sure what they need. But if you want to also um, elaborate a little bit more on, on where, um, you know, where it stands with that pack, I can certainly help you get started and give you more tools um, to help you make that successful as well. Okay, now I'll shoot you an email. Thank you so much. I know I don't rely on my memory too much anymore. <laughs> so I often tell people, can you just email me? <laughs> so, um, but, you know, anyone here that is looking for more information on anything that you see, um, definitely just shout out, uh, you know, give me a quick email. Some of you have my cell phone already, so don't be afraid to text it to me too. Um, I love reminders. Um, Hannah, has there been any talk or conversation about starting Sea Scouts in DWC? There is a unit, a Sea Scouts unit that I believe is starting up. Um, I, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what location, um, but I can look at that for you and I can definitely send that over to you as well. Um, I got another message, sorry. <laughs> so I was looking at that. So I came here to also show you where the adopt a school information is. So if you scroll down in any of these and under any of these programs here, you'll see BSA adopt a school program link. And if we click on that, it brings us to an informational page. You can actually register your unit on the page. Um, and I still have to figure out if they're still sending out patches for this, and I will get back to you guys on that. Um, I know at one point um, you registered and they would send out, 
you know, patches for the involvement. Um, but I definitely um, will double check if that's still the case. But here's the Dr. School program. And it explains briefly what the initiative is about, um, which is, you know, improving our schools, building a partnership, um, as we mentioned earlier. And then what I love is that it has some ideas here um, listed out. So if you're not sure how to partner with the school, and even um, Chris, I think it was you that asked about the principal meeting. You know, you could go in to a principal meeting offering the adopt a school program. You know, and that could be the initial meeting. You know, hey, I wanted to meet with you to discuss a partnership opportunity. We'd like to adopt the school and offer our, you know, services in terms of grounds beautification, or we'd like to do a giving tree for the holiday season, or, you know, um, do you do a scholastic book fair? We would like to, you know, we can get, we can help out at the scholastic book fair and provide bookmarks because I am getting bookmarks printed. Um, you know, there's a literacy program here as well. Um, the bookmarks will have joint scouting information on it too. Um, so yeah, they have this whole list. If you can see that on the left-hand side, teacher appreciation week, that's a huge thing. Um, cleaning up, um, after school events, maybe your older scouts can volunteer as kind of like den leaders for the after school enrichment programs and after school, a lot of the schools, it's separate from the actual school system. Like, um, usually it's a different contact for the after school programming. So just keep that in mind. But it's just a way to be seen and heard in the schools and to partnership with the schools in your communities. Um, we usually ask for, um, they suggest a, this is the registration here, very simple there. And it just sends you a confirmation email and then they do have frequently asked questions. So they ask for a year commitment. Obviously, if anyone wants to opt out at any time it's this is not a mandatory um you know a mandatory thing for units it's it's just kind of a suggestion but you can opt out um anytime but it really a year long is is um a great commitment because you can go in in the fall um you know see what what they're in need of and then you can provide you know some feedback with what your scouts may be able to um, provide to them as well. And then as you're partnering and talking about all those great things, you know, you could bring up like, hey, we have this event coming up. Do you think you could put it in your newsletter or in a Blackboard email? Um, you know, maybe you get involved with the PTO more and um, the PTO maybe can put something in their newsletter or on their Facebook pages as well. And it just kind of gets that relationship working. Any questions about that so far? I would highly recommend trying anyone that can get into the adopt school thing. It can be small or big. Um, I'm out of Nashua. We just did a back to school thing. And before the adopt school thing, I got permission that our Nashua school area, we're shorthanded on staff. Okay. Well, they're handing out bags. Well, they need people to help stuff some of those bags. We had our pack actually uh, help stuff some of those packs. So I scratch your back, I, you know, you scratch mine. So they allowed us to put flyers in some of the schools that we we're trying to hit up. So we have flyers for our pack inside each one of those flyers, um, handout bags that they did. So I know it's just a foot in the door. So when the adopt the scout thing came in, hopefully can, we can start doing more of that. But, you know, it's small little things you can do especially right now with the school um, shortage of staff, anywhere you can help them, it gets your foot in the door. That is very true. You have stuffing backpacks, you know, uh, maybe doing a food drive for the school, any, anything like that. And, and like you said, Josh, it's a great opportunity to say, oh, as we're stuffing backpacks, do you mind if we throw flyers in or I have some bookmarks or stickers, can we throw those in? Um, it's a great, great way to get the information out there. 
I just wanted to share a few more quick resources and then I'd love, um, you know, if you guys have more questions or something I didn't cover, but um, this is a QR code to nhscanning.org districts. And it's really important for everybody to know who your district teams are. You probably have heard from some of your district team leaders because we have a real push for membership and really want, want to be there and support everybody as hands-on as possible. Um, but if you're not sure who your district leaders are, the district page is, is a great help. They have content information listed, who your district commissioner is, um, the district chair, and if they have more folks on the district committee, you'll see a list of folks on there as well. Plus, it gives you roundtable information. And if you have not attended roundtable due to COVID or wherever else, I highly encourage everyone to attend their roundtables. That's where you're going to get updated information, resources, and the support of other leaders as well. Um, at a national level, they have Cub Scout Roundtable videos, which you can find through this QR code. Um, and they, um, they have a lot of other resources as well um, once you start navigating that page. And then there is Cub Chat that National does. Um, this is a QR code to the Cub Chat page as well. And these are um, leader tips that they give live. And it's usually one or two topics that they focus on. And it's just, it's just more idea sharing, which is, which is great and more resources from National. And then, oh, look at that. You just wanna see more of my face. Lunchtime Live is Thursdays at 12.30. I do a quick check-in about 10 minutes or so where I'm either sharing a new tool, a new resource, um, and announcements, and then I really encourage people to get interactive. So if you comment with questions or comment with some ideas or anything, I try to be interactive during that time as well. And that's on the Daniel Webster Council Facebook page. And this QR code leads, leads to all our um, videos. And then um, just wanna thank you all for your engagement and membership growth and everything that you all do for scouting. I know um, it's a huge commitment and we're all super, super busy and we all appreciate you very much. Um, I'm looking at the question here. Hannah asked if she can attend Daniel Webster Council roundtables, um, even though she's out of council and Josh did answer that in the chat. Yes, Hannah. Um, of course, yeah, I mean, I, we welcome everybody. I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, does everyone know where to find the incentives on the um, membership and marketing hub? Yeah? No. No? <laughs> I'm like, anyone? <laughs> All right. Well, I would love to show you, Jen. Um, we'll go back to our um, membership and marketing hub here. And you guys just yell out if you want to see something or if you didn't see something and would like to know where it is if we do have it. It's uh, taking its time, here we go. So we're gonna go back to when you um, search for Daniel Webster Council's Membership and Marketing Hub, we'll go back to that home page, which is right here. And we're gonna scroll down and the quick links is kind of all the important links that you'll probably be looking for. So the resources and downloads is where we just were. It's all the resources listed out in steps. And then right next to it is membership incentives right up top. So that way um, you guys can check that out and keep updated. So if we click on that, there you go, there we go. I click a hundred times and then <laughs> shoot myself in the foot. Um, so here are the membership growth incentives. So we have the $25 joining fee incentive. Any unit that submits the joint scouting night information by September 15th, it was by the end of this month, but we extended it for everybody, will receive the coupon code to be used for new online applicants to save um, their $25 one time joining fee. And then it actually has that link to submit your joint scan information right there. And then here's the council's president's membership challenge. So if you recruit five new youth, um, crossovers don't count, sorry guys. 
Um, these are the details down here um, that, um, for, that you can win as the incentive. So the first 10 units um, are at $200, sorry, should have worn my glasses. <laughs> um, the next 10 units would uh, receive 150. And then finally the last, uh, well, the, not the last, but the, 10 unit, the next 10 units after that, will receive $100 deposited into their account. And then you can actually submit your information here. So if you have five new youth that have joined, um, you can click on that and submit your information and then you'll get a verification email um, to let you know that those, will be, those funds will be transferred into your account. So here is also the mobile base camp reservation form. Um, if you can't reserve the mobile base camp or any of the tools that you select, most likely it's because it's already booked for your date. We have a lot of September and October dates already filled up. We have two mobile base camps now. We have mobile base camp one, which is the original, mobile base camp two, which doesn't have the wrap on it yet. So it's not branded, it's a blank trailer but it has all the same um, awesome tools inside of it. Um, so in the mobile base camp is our Gaga Ball Pit, archery, um, safe archery set, a BB gun range, spike ball. Um, we have backyard bass in the mobile base camp as well, which is waterless fishing. And I also in the membership bins put in some color pages and crayons and that sort of thing for the real little kiddos that maybe can't take advantage of the other fun activities. So all here are all links to important documents that go along with the mobile base camp and, and our other physical tools that we offer. So you can sign up here to help with the mobile base camp. It doesn't have to be with your unit, although you could bring your whole unit and then you could make that community event into your unit's recruitment event. And all the details are here in the sign up, so you can easily sign up for multiple days to volunteer if, if you're inclined to do so. Um, this is where you can reserve the trailer, the mobile base camp. And these are, um, it's the mobile base camp inventory and specs. So we have measurements of everything, the inventory that's available, um, pretty much all the real details that you may need. Um, there's a calendar of current reservations. And then we have, this is fairly new. We have a standard operating procedure um little booklet and that's also available in the membership bins of the mobile base camps as well and it just walks you through how to set everything up um you know the um there's a script on how to talk with new families as they approach the membership table there is also a qr code that is mandatory for part participants to scan so that way um it's it has a a participation form, as well as it collects their contact information, which goes into our customer uh, management system as well. Um, and then, um, and then this is the actual form here. So that way, if you find yourself at the mobile base camp or you find yourself at a recruiting event, and maybe you don't have a way to collect information, you want to click on this, and it will bring up the QR code for folks to scan. So as you can see, here are some of the upcoming reservations. We did have a blackout period through September 1st because we um, currently our ranger is out of the office. So the mobile base camp cannot be towed. Um, the um, Bristol Old Home Day that they ended up utilizing um, a bunch of other items that they're picking up, which worked out good. Um, and then, um, yeah, so you have to see the list there. And then it, it goes into the booking information. So you can book individual pieces um, that are available. And then um, it just has this form and then it gets sent into the membership queue. And then I get back to you with more details if needed as well. I'm looking at the comments again here. 
Um, I don't know, Hannah, when that um, opens up actually. Um, Hannah asked when, when the staff applications for Camp Carpenter open up. Um, if you wanna submit a support ticket to support at nhscouting.org, that will go to our um, camp um, general manager and they'll be able to, oh, thanks Jillian, is it normally January? I didn't know that off the top of my head. Um, Jillian said normally January. Um, but if you'd like to enter a support ticket, if anyone has questions that um, you're not sure exactly who to contact, but um, you need someone to get back to you, um, you can email support at nhscouting.org and, and it'll go to the right person uh, to answer your questions. Is there anything else anyone would like to see while we're on the membership and marketing hub? Did that help, Jennifer? It did. I, <clears throat> I have now got a lot of going down the rabbit hole to go look at the marketing hub to see what I can utilize. <laughs> yes, Thanks. please do. Yeah, if you're having coffee or um, you know tea and you have a moment it's a great place to really click around and see there's so many resources um, available on the hub. And like I said, if you don't see something that you really think um, should be there, definitely let us know. Thank you. Thank you. So really right now, um, the key things to think about is if you haven't already um, planned a joint scouting event, or got a date on the calendar, that's the first thing you should do. Almost simultaneously, you wanna make sure that your BS Scout pins are updated because that is how the public finds you. So you wanna make sure that contact information is correct. I can tell you there's a lot of units that have outdated contact information on those pins because I downloaded the most recent report and I was calling a bunch of unit leaders or who I thought were unit leaders for different units and they're like, oh, I'm actually not the scout master anymore. I'm not, you know, I'm not in the pack anymore. And I said, oh, well, that's, that's funny because you're listed on the pin. <laughs> so, um, so definitely make sure that your unit's pin is updated with the most up-to-date contact information, your most up-to-date meeting locations and times um, because that, that's how people are trying to find you and connect with you. Um, so let's say we have joint scouting events, unit pin, get that membership um, coordinator, new member coordinator selected in your, in your unit. That's very important. And um, make sure that you have the joint scouting event planned out and that you have volunteer support at that event. And then make sure you're all set with following up. Have a way to follow up, whether people scan your bscout.org pin. You can download your individual pin in, from uh, going into your invitation manager on my.scouting. Or um, you can call up your pin on a few devices maybe that folks can utilize at your event. Or you can print out that join scouting sign-in sheet in the good old fashioned way um, of folks writing their phone numbers and emails. You can follow up with a phone call uh, and an email to those families, inviting them back to your next meeting or next event and seeing how you can help them join your event. And then if you're doing paper applications, you guys don't have to hold on to them. And as a matter of fact, we suggest you don't hold on to them because I can't tell you how many unit leaders I've talked to that have said, oh, our old come master squirreled all these applications into this bin and we just found a bunch of them and our scouts haven't been registered. And remember the scouts being registered it, it covers their insurance. You really want those kids to be covered under our insurance if anything happens. We know how young kids are. So you want to make sure they're covered under the insurance. And also um, when they're registered, they're, that's when their earnings, earnings, their advancements can be tracked as well. So, you know, if there are ghosts out there, that makes it really inconvenient for, for a few reasons, for a lot of reasons. So um, you don't have to hold on to them until you decide to venture up to the member care center, which is at 1500 Bodwell Road, by the way, it's not at Holt Ave. 
you can actually um, email us um, pictures of the applications. You can, if you, a lot of folks actually text me pictures of the applications. Um, so you don't need to hold on to them. You can send us photographs of them, um, you know, downloads of them. Just make sure it's, everything is signed and that all the information is filled out correctly. A lot of folks forget to write down the, the unit uh, type and number. Um, some folks forget to sign the application. So just make sure everything is filled out. And then if you're emailing or texting or sending us the applications, include payment or include the way that you'd like to pay. If you have a unit account at council, we can withdraw with uh, permission from the unit account. If you are sending a check, then just let us know that you're sending the check. Um, or we can take credit card over the phone as well for the registration. So we're trying to make it as easy and efficient as possible for everyone to register their adults and scout. Any questions about that? Yeah, the new membership fees, are, are those up on the council um, for reference? Yeah, so that is under um, the execution step, I believe, um, in that resources and downloads page. And you'll see it's called um, the fee, a BSA fee, sh fee chart. And you can download that and it has all the updated fees with um, the update insurance costs as well for 2023 too. So at your joint scouting events, you'll want to have that fee chart printed or at least handy on your device. Um, you'll want to have your BS Scout pin QR code or link available um, and or the joint scouting sign up. Some, some folks really don't like to scan QR codes. Um, and so, you know, having that option of the, of the sign in sheet um, is definitely important. Have some extra pins on hand have some paper applications or you can download and print the applications from um, from the membership and marketing hub as well. But really encourage them to sign up online. That's the most efficient way to do it. And that's where they can utilize the promo code as well as online. We don't have a promo code for the paper applications. As you guys probably know, we have yard signs, posters, we have welcome packet envelopes. We have joint scouting night envelopes with like a checklist on the front. So if you do have paper applications, those could go on the envelopes and then it has you double check that you have everything there before you turn it into council. Um, there are marketing flyers on the membership table on Nutter Lodge as well and applications too. I will warn you that our paper applications are getting very low in stock. Um, we've been having um, trouble uh, ordering those, just like with other things with COVID, it's been a little bit challenging. Um, so I'm definitely encouraging everybody to do as much online as possible. Um, what else do we have? We have yard signs, did I say that already? We have a lot of physical tools available for um, folks to pick up at Nettle Lodge. And if you're not frequently going to Manchester, we can definitely arrange a way to meet up with a volunteer um, and, you know, get you the resources you need as well. Did I answer everyone's questions for tonight? I feel like I went through a lot of things quickly. Um, anything that you guys feel I missed or that you were hoping to get out of the meeting that I didn't cover? So the... Uh... The joint scouting event probably needs to happen pretty soon. Is there a sort of a recommended deadline to get that done by maybe middle of October or? I always suggest, you know, September, October is really a great time because you want to kind of catch families before they commit to a lot of sports and clubs and karate and all the other things that our families are doing. Families these days are super, super busy. Um, and if they commit to other things in the fall, they most likely may not add another thing. Um, so um, we're asking that joint scouting dates are at least entered into, uh, you know, entered online by the 15th. If you have one entered, even if it's an October date or a November date, if you have the joint scouting date entered, then that's when you can earn the promo code um, to welcome new families with that discount as well. So um, I would definitely, um, you know, the next 
um, committee meeting that you have or the meeting or, uh, you know, your next unit meeting where you can pull maybe a few leaders aside, discuss a date. Now, the thing is, guys, it doesn't have to be this big, fancy event, right? I think a lot of us put a lot of pressures, pressure on ourselves to make it this big, elaborate, contrast worthy event. You can have your joint scouting night at a PAC meeting, right? You might want to have a few, you know, you might want your dens thinking about, you know, what they're going to do during that meeting. That will be, you know, fun, of course. I mean, it's, we all think it's fun. But, you know, maybe ask the kiddos, what, what made you join? What, what was fun? You know, what did you find super fun that you couldn't wait to come back and do? And then plan that. Um, but it doesn't have to be this Pinterest worthy uh, picture perfect event. You can simply have your joint scouting night at your next meeting. Just make sure you have a membership table kind of set up that you have what you need there to really welcome those families. You know, if you have welcome packets, even if they're digital welcome packets, make sure families know where they can find more information. Have your calendars printed out so they can see what's coming up and just have, you know, um, a membership volunteer of some sort or one of your assistant scout masters, like Hannah said, or, um, you know, one of your um, den leaders or leaders in the pack who are knowledgeable and a people person that are able to really connect with those families as they visit your unit. Does that help, Chris? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Josh? <laughs> we gotta say, if you're looking at something simple, I've seen a few units just do board game nights. Mm -hmm. Everyone that's within the unit already just bring a board game. It's just really simple to do. Because really those first, especially at the Cub Scout level, they just want to have fun first thing in the door. And that gives you the opportunity and the, the other adult leaders, while the kids are having a blast, to talk with the parents. Um, and this is where that new member of coordinator is at the Cub Scout level. I always recommend whoever the Cub Master is, the spouse is probably the best person of that Cub Master to be um, that coordinator. Because that Cub Master is like the spirit person. He's he's the big kid, you know, of all the Cubs. He's the goofball, you know. And who who best to uh, you know bounce off that spiritual person? The spouse, you know, because right. <laughs> you know, they get it every day at home. I'm sure, you know. So you know, it's the best you know course of action to get maybe that person or you know as similar as possible. But I do find at the Cub Scout level, the best way to have the join the Scout Nights, you have the adult greeting the person, just like you would go into a job interview or you walk into a hotel. This is the person opening the door. This is that first smile that you see when you walk in that's greeting you. But at the same time, have maybe the first year Weeblo or a bear to be next to you to greet that kid that's coming in. Say, hey, my name's you know, Chris. We're playing board games come with me and that would be a great way to break the ice because just like any kid joining a new school joining a karate any sport moving from another town they're going to be nervous you know just like anyone else would you know especially if they don't know yeah. there so breaking that ice to get those kids not nervous is obviously having the kid there to introduce themselves and you know we do lego um, tournaments you know we do a lot of lego we have one on the here in nashville on the 17th of september we're doing a lego derby so, you know, kids are actually building their Lego cars to race them at the same time down down the pile of derby track. And kids get to play and have Legos. Some of the parents do get the charter rep. Our charter rep's really young and he has more fun than some of the kids do. You know, so you think a lot of that spirit. But it's a great opportunity to get, you know, the youth to break the ice for that nervous. As soon as you can break that, yeah. nervous, you know, the better chance you're going to get those kids. Uh, and yeah, I like the idea of the board game and the Legos just to get them going. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And it doesn't have to be, you know, crazy. Like you know, Sydney said, it doesn't have to be a high end, you know, trying to impress the, you know, the top people in the world type of thing. It's just keep it simple. Simpler, the better, I find. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's less of a headache to <laughs> clean up afterwards. Yeah, for sure. Unless if you're playing a lot of um, Monopoly and you get those kids that know how to really play and throw the board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could even have a night where I know um, Josh has some Ringata Regatta sets. 
Um, oh, thanks. You can even have a night where, um, you know, your joint scouting event is making uh, recycled boats. So you offer juice boxes, um, individual bags of chips, and um, um, so I'm trying to think of what else. What am I missing? You can be just foam boards. boards. Yeah, 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 because you do foam boards, boards too. Go to five and, uh, little dollar store, buy a couple of those little right. uh, bundles. Make a little sale. Cut them. You just cut them, put a little sale. Um, like Sydney was saying, I do have a couple foot lockers um, that is anyone that wants. I, you, know, you can reach out to Sydney or myself, but you know, reach out to Sydney if you want. It's probably easier. Um, it's just a foot locker. It has a, a jug for six gallons of water, has a regatta, and has about six to a dozen already pre made regatta boats um, that some scouts made. You know, they're nothing fancy. There's gold, and the sail has a a wall detail of like uh, Naruto or video game Minecraft stuff, you know, something simple <laughs> to get those kids. But, you know, it's all in there. So all you have to do is provide a couple, you know, like a six foot table or two, you know, the laid across. Uh, but it's easy enough to grab. I know uh, one group up in Concord used it. Uh, we're planning on using it probably this upcoming weekend. But I got a couple foot lockers, just something, especially because those mobile base camps are sometimes hard to get. And if your event's not that big that you feel like you need that mobile base camp because it's a lot for a small event, well, this little foot, these couple of foot lockers will help. Um, I am yeah. also working on a, a couple foot lockers. Uh, we'll, we'll have those in the next couple of weeks of just those uh, Pinewood Derby tracks, the blue, you know, really quick ones to throw up with some uh, pre-made Pinewood Derbies and a couple of Lego cars in there if you want. So just trying to find a couple other optional things. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. That's cool. And, it, and it's like, you know, that's what the kids love is the derby, right? That's what most scouts talk about, <laughs> even as they get older, is you know, their derby cars and how proud they are. And I and like I was saying with the Ring Gata Regatta boats, like you could have them make those boats at that joint scouting event. And then maybe you have stickers or something to put on the back of the sail saying, join us for a Ring Gata Regatta on this date. And it brings them back because of course they're gonna want to race the boat. So maybe you have them come back and race the boat. Maybe you race the boat the same night. Maybe you have a Rangata Regatta with you know the scouts and the friends that they brought for the joint scouting event. You can definitely, you know, that would be super fun. But you could also make it as kind of like a little incentive for them to come back as well. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Try to you know. regatta boats, I believe the dollar. The family dollar dollar oh. stores they sell some of those sometimes and sometimes if you're near a home depot they have regatta kits that they do on um build a sh build workshop days when it's the first saturday sometimes they have some of those that they're willing to donate um i ended up getting a full box of them um, a couple months ago from home depot so. cool uh, one thing i do highly recommend if you're looking for a quick and easy way that doesn't make you do any setup, all you have to do is attend. If you're near a Home Depot, wear your Class B shirts. Go down to that first Saturday of the month. That's when they do their workshop days. Especially your bears, because I believe they have to build a project for one of their requirements. Have those bears go down there with the Class B shirts that indicate your unit. Have them build. And while they, you know, standing around or sitting around doing their kits, you know, yeah, might have three or four kids there with their Class B shirts on, you know, that has their unit, you know, insignia type of stuff on it. Well, you know, everyone's going to be looking like, hey, they look like a team, you know, and their logos are all sticking out saying what unit they're from. And let the parents hand out a couple of little flyers or, you know, while you're sitting next to them. And they get a requirement done at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I believe Home Depot is always that first Saturday uh, between 9 and noon or 9 and 1. Um, you know, you can go onto the website for the workshop days and you can register how many kids, but it's a great opportunity. Our kids do it quite a bit. I always recommend our bears. We ended up just getting three scouts just from that, um, as of yesterday. Nice. From the last one. Nice. But definitely look at different community things that you can just attend. Um, yeah, I know in Salem, they have a couple fun days. Just walking around the park as a den with your class B type of shirts on helps. The more exposure you get, the more it shows that you're out there. Awesome. I love it. Well, it's yeah. 8 10. In Cincinnati, that's what we found. Was, yeah. <laughs> Coming from Cincinnati, that's what we found when we were building up our pack was 
the more stuff you do, the more kids get attracted to it. It sort of builds itself. So. Very true. I, I really appreciate the ideas. Oh, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for joining us. And our, our next um, workshop is, I haven't even looked that far ahead in September yet, so I better, I better start thinking about that. <laughs> it's already been a crazy end of August for us all here. Um, so our next membership workshop is September 22nd. Um, they're usually the fourth Thursday of each month. And um, you can go onto the Membership and Marketing Hub under workshops, membership workshops, and you can actually register for the next one there as well. And you can watch the past ones too. We've had uh, one workshop a month since I joined council as a professional. So since last May, so there's um, quite a few workshops there. And you can also download the presentations as well. Um, so thank you all for coming. I'm gonna wrap it up unless anyone has other questions, but if you do, you can email again at membership at nhscaling.org. Uh, really appreciate your time. I appreciate everyone's efforts. I know everybody's working really hard. And contact me anytime. Thanks, everybody.